agony for me because I have that same heart for the community, for people as a whole. And um, I just love what they do and how they do it. But my big brother, he is an author of um, A Toast to the Men, a great book. When y'all get a chance, please go on Amazon and look that up. It's called A Toast to a Men. Awesome book, and it's not only for uh, for the men. It's for women, too. Like, it is, it, we'll talk. We'll talk about that. But it'll really <laughs> teach you a lot. Um, so he's a phenomenal speaker as well. So that's why we, you know, the Lord, I know that the Lord laid it on my heart for him to be here. Um, I'm just excited about what's getting ready to come out of his mouth, though, and uh, what God is getting ready to do. So at this time, I'm going to ask my brother, S.D. Booker, to come and speak to us about making up a man. <laughs> Thank you. As, uh, as my sister Bridget stated, I'm S.D. Booker, and I've stated before, S.D. Booker, the author of A Toast to the Man. And uh, I just want to thank Bridget for extending the invite to, to me to speak. Now, you put some pressure on me. <laughs> she said, phenomenal speaker. <laughs> now, I will be transparent and say, I thought I was going to be on a panel and just answering questions. I didn't know. I was gonna have to stand up and speak <laughs> on a topic, so uh, I'm going. I'm going with the flow here. <laughs> so oh, yeah. when I got here, I realized, oh, you want me to speak on a topic? Oh. <laughs> and I should have asked you. I sit there. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Oh, you okay? That's why I That's stand there. That's a man. That's why they need wives. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this topic is uh, the making of a man, right? The making of a man, and. You know, that's, that's uh, really profound, the making of a man. So just from those words, you know, something made this man, the making of a man. So as a man, my first question and all of our first questions should be, who made me? You know, who made me and what am I? And what is my purpose? So uh, if you make anything, a tool, you're, you're particular about, the 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 the, uh, the materials you use to make that tool, uh, you know what that tool's purpose is, right? And you care about that tool. These guys that will kill you over their tools, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? And these guys are, are are hurt when their tools come up stolen, mm -hmm. and that's the way they make their living. A lot of them. Mm -hmm. uh, these guys spend a lot of money on tools, and so that's how we got to see ourselves with our maker. A tool. We are a tool to do to do good on this earth. Our purpose is to spread the gospel, spread goodness. That's the gospel goodness, to spread the word of God. And so a lot of people, a lot of men don't realize that. Has have not come to the understanding of self. Why am I here? Who made me? A lot of men feel worthless, they feel out of place. They don't know what they're here for, what they're supposed to be doing. So like they say, an idle mind <laughs> hey, called destruction, you know? And so that's what goes on a lot amongst men. So when you, you're dealing with a person who doesn't know what they're here for, who made them, and then you mix, mix that with testosterone, muscle, <laughs> And then you put a, you might put a gun in the mix, <laughs> and you might put some drugs in the mix. You're gonna get a lot of damage out here. And so we got to get back to understanding and teaching other men and young boys from an early age who made us and what our purpose is, what we're supposed to be doing, and that we're tools out here. We're tools to spread goodness, to do goodness. I want to read a couple of scriptures. I won't read uh, too many scriptures, but I want to touch on a couple of things. In Genesis, first chapter, 26 verse, it says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. And so God created man in his own image, and the image of God created him, him male and female created him them. So that lets me know if I'm created in God's image, I am a God. You know, let me read another scripture. People don't like to talk about that. They, they, they say that blasphemy. 
Psalms 82 and 6. I said, you are gods. You are all sons of the Most High. And so the imagery I like to put out there, imagine a big ocean, huge ocean, endless, endless body of water. You can't see any earth, it's endless. That's God. We are the waves or the ripples mm -hmm. in that ocean. Mm -hmm. Are we the God? No. <laughs> we are a little small, small piece mm -hmm. in that huge body of water. But that small little piece can either save you when you're thirsty, and you can also drown from those, a little portion of water also. Man. Okay? Yeah. So it's powerful, depending on how it's used. So no, I'm not, I'm not the God. I am a ripple in that. I am a God. That's in the Word. I didn't say that. That's in the Word. So um, I wrote a book. A toast to the men. And what motivated me, well, we'll go back. I've always had the gift of writing since a kid. But decisions I made, starting a family too young, mm -hmm. having kids too young, mm -hmm. you're forced to do things that you don't want to do. You're forced to take jobs you don't want to take. Mm -hmm. uh, you're in a rush because mm -hmm. you got to make money. You're in a rush. So you sit on your God-given gifts. Every one of us here were created to do something, to use our, our gifts as tools to impact lives. When you don't do it the way God wants it to be done, you get off track and you start scrambling and hustling to make ends meet. And you get off track what you're supposed to be doing. So we'll fast forward, sitting on the gift five years ago, me and my wife had a rough patch. I was going through things with my ex-wife. Mm -hmm. Ex-wife, doing things wrong, see? Mm -hmm. Ex-wife, mm -hmm. they've been married 30 years. <laughs> You're 27. Mm -hmm. I got an ex-wife, right? Yeah, and, I'm, and I'm young. <laughs> well, I'm young. Well, I'm 44. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, all, yeah. Yeah, it's all subjective. Yeah. So I'm going back and forth, custody battles. Uh, false accusations, wow. losing my job, lost my job mm -hmm. because of a false accusation. Criminal court, family court, man, I'm going through it. Mm -hmm. And before I just snapped, I said, you know, I need a release. And I went to write it. And I said, you know, I can't be the only one going through this stuff. Mm -hmm. Let me write. I'm not going to write from a victim perspective. I'm no victim. A lot of this, I created my circumstances because of decisions I made mm -hmm. at a young age. And this is just a result of some decisions I made or didn't make. All right. Now, I can't control how someone else acts, mm -hmm. but I invited that person to my life. I wasn't raped. I procreated with that person. These are decisions I made. Mm -hmm. You got to take ownership. Yes. Now, you can't yes. control how someone yes. else is going to treat you or what they do, but we got to take some ownerships, some ownership of what happens in our lives because we chose these people, we chose to procreate, whatever it is. You got to take some ownership and not be a victim. Mm -hmm. So I said, I'm not going to write this from a victim perspective. I'm going to write it from a teaching perspective and uh, be tra very transparent and, and just show the mistakes I made. And it's just not going to be about that situation. I'm going to start from different things I see in the men and society and everything. And I'm going to just tell my truth. And and uh, I did it. And it was a hit. And uh, it's doing well. But as I look back, writing the book, everything was out of order. I come from a mother, single mother. Now some mothers are not some mothers are not single. They they single with children. Mm -hmm. My mother was actually a single mother. <laughs> no father visiting, no child support. That that's a real single mother. Mm -hmm. Some people are just mothers that are single. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we yeah. group them all together. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So yeah. mother, four children, four different fathers. Mm -hmm. 
It's not do it's not going the way God planned it to be. Right? Right? It's out of sync. It's out of order. Right? Mm -hmm. Married three times. So now we got things out of order. It's dysfunction. Mm -hmm. All me and my brothers, three boys, one girl, we got different perspectives on what a man is and what a man should be. We got totally different perspectives. And it's a direct reflection of the foundation, right? Mm -hmm. My sister, first child at 15, she had five kids by 26. You see that? But it started somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. this, is my, this is my third marriage. Mm -hmm. So these are cycles that are starting to be created. And we gotta we gotta start breaking them. Mm -hmm. But you first gotta you can't cry in the corner. Mm -hmm. You can't blame people. I can't blame my mom. I can't blame no any. I can't blame my father. Mm -hmm. Their results of their situation, right? Mm -hmm. Somewhere somebody gotta take ownership and say, okay, this is what happened. I get I can't control the past. Looking back, it's gonna hurt my neck. <laughs> so let me take accountability what I can control and make the turn for straightness. You know, that's the only way it's gonna get right. Accountability and ownership, right? Mm -hmm. You know, with men, we have to, as I was reading the scripture, before you get to the 26th scripture of Genesis 1, God is in the scripture it says everything God had created, right? The fowl, the waters, the sky, uh, everything he had created. Mm -hmm. Then he creates Adam, he creates man. Before the woman is brought into the picture, Adam and God are forming a relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he's teaching Adam a skill how to till, how to grow vegetation and fruit, how to eat off the land, how to take care of the land. Mm -hmm. He has a job, he has a skill set before the woman even gets in the picture. Mm -hmm. We ought to sink on that man. <laughs> well, that's a big issue, mm -hmm. that's a huge issue. Well, we don't have our stuff together mm -hmm. before the woman gets into the picture. Mm -hmm. So right then, there's a there's some lack of respect that needs to be there from the woman. Cause she feeling like you need me to do to make it. And that's out of sync. That's out of sync. She should never feel like that. She always should respect the God in you and know, you know what, I need to be on my P's and Q's with this man, because he really don't need me. <laughs> this man got a relationship with God. He's going to make it. it I, I don't even think most women want that kind of burden. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Right? So, uh, we're just out of sync in many ways. Uh, when my wife and I were just dating, she's a single mother. First time divorce. Marriage runs in her family, though. But uh, she was the first divorce and a divorcee. And we started dating. I guess the twins, her twins was like 12. Mm -hmm. And one day I was over visiting and uh, she needed, she wanted me to go to the store to get her something. I said, uh, it's, it's the twins return to one girl. And I said, well let Iman ride his bike up there. And she thought I cussed or something. She's like, what? what? <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> let him ride, ride his bike up to the store. So protective, mm -hmm. <laughs> so protective, so just, <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I, I heard him in the long run. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I heard him in the long run. Mm -hmm. Now things might happen on your way from the house to the store, but it's a lesson. It's a lesson, you learn. Things happen. You know, you learn, you grow. That's the only way. But at an early age, we gotta teach young boys how to take risk, calculated risk, legal risk, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> Say yeah. that, Man. right? Like that. How yeah. to lead, yeah. 
you know, with my own kids, if we was walking from the store, <clears throat> I tell my, my son, it might be five or six, say, uh, get us back home. I'm telling, I'm telling from behind. I want to see if he, I'm, he don't know what's going on, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? It's just subtle things. He, don't, he doesn't know though. Mm -hmm. I would, uh, with the kids, I would, uh, some weekends, we had, we, we, we play in office. Caleb, you're the manager. These are the employees. Give them all the job to do around the house. Mm -hmm. Now, Caleb might be only seven years old. And he got these 15 year olds. Yes. <laughs> so now we're going to see how we can communicate and relate to each other. Is the manager title going to get to your ego? Mm -hmm. Or you being an employee to this seven year old and him giving you a directive going to mess with your ego? And then we'll switch around different weekends. This is about leadership, just teaching boys just subtle ways how to lead, you know. And uh, and yeah, that's 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 just one of the things that I think we've missed through the years. And that goes back to Adam walking with God, God showing him leadership before the woman even got involved. Mm -hmm. He had a relationship with God, and he knew what he was supposed to be doing. The woman, he said, "Well, I need to find this man to help me." Right? It's feminist entity, energy. It's masculine energy. When they come together with the same goal, man, can nothing stop that. Mm -hmm. I mean, they can do anything. Mm -hmm. The thing is, things are so out of whack because we got so much in us that, that, that got us to that point. We got so much negative negativity in us. Because what we've experienced through our own households or different relationships, and so we're so much, we're so tainted, right? And so then, by the time we get to the person they could poss possibly work with, man, we bring in so much negative energy, and we have to release. We're living in the past. We have to release that hey, accountability, acceptance. Mm -hmm. and let, let's do this. Let's line up with God and do this. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, that was another point I was going to make. Uh, yeah, I mean, this just slipped my mind. It slipped my mind. But, uh, yeah, when we when we get back to that point of uh, walking with God, understanding who made us, what made us, and that's the making of a man. It's not about who can change oil <laughs> who can how much weight how much weight you can lift you know how many muscles you got how 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 fine you are it's not about that do you know who you are do you have a relationship with God or in, are you using that as it should be used we don't use a hammer as a screwdriver <laughs> right <laughs> you ought to see you ought to sing. Mm -hmm. Every one of us got a purpose, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't know that purpose. And I might be wrong. This is what I've always said, how to find your purpose. Something that comes easy to you, that brings you joy, brings others joy, is not, it's not even attached to money. Right now, in pursuing that, that doesn't mean you're not going to run into stuff. But this thing you got in you, it just comes so natural to you, and it may be so difficult for somebody else. That's because that's not their purpose, <laughs> and they're struggling with. They're trying to do something that they're not supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. Right? I knew I was supposed to be writing, and it used to eat at me throughout the years. But I was like, man, I can't. I can't make no money off writing. I got these kids. I, but then I was put in a position where I had nothing but time to write. Mm -hmm. And I had to release this pain. And this guy said, well, I'm going to put you in this position where you're going to have, you're going to need a release. So you're about to snap on somebody. Mm -hmm. And writing was my release. And now I'm working on the second book. But I was doing, I had been in IT. I'm still in IT, but now I see the exit. I see the light coming out. I've been in IT over 24 years. 
Never loved it. When I get home, I don't touch a computer. She's into gadgets more than me. They have to force me to upgrade my phone. <laughs> I'm not even into IT like that. Yeah, yeah. And I'm good at it, but I told her, and I've, I've climbed the ladder, I said, but I'm not great, only because it's not my passion. I don't want to deal with it once I clock out. That means it's not my passion. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, I want to let it go. You know, so find your passion, find what God put you here for, right? And that's the making of a man. Know your worth. Know your worth, right? When you read that scripture saying He's calling you a God, don't, don't, don't let that negativity creep into your head and say, "No, nah, I ain't no God." No, you are. You ain't the God, <laughs> but you are a ripple. In that big pool of water, right? And then you do have impact. You do. And so uh, that's what I want to leave you guys with. I want to thank Bridget again mm -hmm. for having me. I wish I was more prepared, but I didn't read she the full prepared. email. <laughs> I take that. <laughs> I sent it to my wife, and uh, I thank you. And I hope someone got something out of this. <laughs>